All right, hello and welcome to this tutorial on Fusion 360. So one of the first things people want to know on how Fusion 360 is how do you get started? Well, that's where I come in. So I really like Fusion 360. I've used SolidWorks for a long time, but unfortunately I don't have the $6,000 to spare to buy a SolidWorks license. In comes Fusion 360 here, and it's perfect for uh, designing parts for my own use for the 3D printer for small companies and uh, you might want to use it too. So I'm going to assume that you downloaded it, you signed in here, you have an account and uh, you've gotten to this stage. Now from here we're going to want to make a sketch. Now the sketch is just a drawing. Uh, this is parametric modeling keep in mind so all the drawings are going to be well defined with dimensions and uh, Yeah, so I just blanked out there. All right, so to get started here, you want to have your sketch on the plane which it's gonna be. So if you're designing a part and you're gonna make it from the bottom up, you wanna sketch on the top plane because that'll be your bottom. If you're making it from the back to the front, you're gonna wanna sketch on the back plane or the front plane. So the front and the back and the top and the bottom, they're, they're the same plane just kind of keep that in mind when you're deciding which plane to sketch on. I'll show you what that means here. So we want to create a sketch and you see here we have these three planes. So there's your top, your back, and your left. So top, bottom, back, front, left, right. We're going to be designing a cube from the bottom up. So the sketch is going to be kind of the the top bottom plane. All right, so I find this a little confusing here. You might hit the wrong one if you're disoriented. So I like to hit this top button here and there. Now I know this is the top bottom plane. So you click that, you click the plane button, and you're ready to sketch. So this opens the sketch palette over here. We actually won't be using any of these right now. These are a little more advanced like the line constraints and such. Uh, all we need to use is this two-point rectangle. Create the rectangle using two points. Wow, that's easy. Yes, it is. So the way that I'm going to be showing you how to do it is uh, kind of the way that you would do it at the beginning when you're first starting out. This isn't the best way. I'll go over the best way in tutorial too, but just to not confuse you here, you click the center point. Oh, there we go. Click the center point, place first corner, and then you drag it, and there you go, you have a rectangle. Now, the important thing about this is that you click the corner here. That way you have a defined reference point. If you make a rectangle just out here in the middle, you have no defined reference point. The whole thing can float around, and uh, that's not good parametric modeling. That's not well defined. All right, parametric modeling, what does that mean? It means that your rectangle doesn't do this. You can tell that it's not fully defined because the lines are blue instead of black. So if you see a blue line, figure out why. Now in this case, it's pretty easy to figure out. These edges don't have lengths associated with them. So you wanna dimension it. So you go to sketch, sketch dimension. Or, you see this little D button, you click D. So if you press D, you get the dimension. We'll make a nice little 30 by 30 cube, or square right now. So there you go, you got a 30 by 30 square. Good job, everyone. Um, you can't really print that, though. It's 2D. You can't print anything that's 2D. It always has to have some depth to it. So from here... After we make our sketch, we'll go to extrude. Um, before you extrude it, check to make sure it's fully defined. You see no blue lines here. Uh, one trick for figuring out if it's fully defined is click a corner and pull it. If you can pull it, it's not fully defined. So if we get rid of that and we pull this, oh hey, it doesn't know how long that length is. Well, we tell it 30, escape. And now, now it knows. Now we can't pull it. Uh, 
that becomes important later on when you have a complex part and you go to back and edit things. If you don't have it fully defined, when you go back and edit things, you might accidentally move something or the way you edit something might change something before what you're actually changing. And if it's not fully defined, it will pull and stretch your part and become a giant nightmare. The other thing about parametric modeling is if you print this off or you mill it or you uh, CNC machine it and you find out, oh, hey, it's one millimeter too big. Well, you can make it a 29 by 29 cube. It's very simple. You always know what the dimensions are. All right. So fully defined. Got it? Got it. Good. Now we want to make this 3D. So we go up to the extrude button here. I suppose we could hit, yeah, you can hit E to do it too, but I always hit the button because it's right there. So you go up, you hit the extrude button, and then you select an enclosed uh, sketch. And you can tell it's enclosed because it's this different color here. So white and tan. So you click the tan, turns blue, and that's how you know you're good to go. Now you get a distance to extrude it you can put 30 or any number and that'll extrude it. Now you can't tell here. So if you rotate it, uh, on mine I have it mapped to SolidWorks controls. It's something you can select at the beginning. I click and hold the middle mouse button and then I can rotate it and say, oh look, 30. So when you rotate it, you get this convenient arrow that you can make it as big or as little as you want. Um, I recommend just going with the dimensions because it's easier to just click 30 here. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. If it says 30 here and 30 here, it's the same thing. But if you want to do 29.25, you can't really pull it to that dimension. Uh, this right here, it changes the taper angle, which if I'm going to do this kind of thing, I, there's, I usually have other methods that I consider better to do it. But if you want to make a quick triangle or pyramid shape, I guess, go ahead and use it. Anyway, we're just making a cube. So zero taper, 30 millimeters. You can see all this over here. These are more advanced things if you want to offset where it starts, but we, we don't need that right now. Uh, one important thing is, I guess for the first one, it wants to be a new body, but later on, we're going to want to join it. So for here, just leave it the way it is. 30 millimeters, you're good to go. All right, well, I'll show you one more time. Create, extrude, click that, three, zero. And you can look around to make sure it looks good. Okay. There you go. And just like that, we have a cube. Um, you can look at the cube, you can rotate the cube, and you can click on the cube. In later videos, actually the next video, I'm gonna go over a better way to do this because there is one major problem here and that's that the center of the drawing is not at the center of the cube. It's a big pet peeve of mine and later on when you go to mirror objects and reference things this becomes kind of a big problem because your origin, if I click this right here, your origin is this corner and that that really bothers me actually. Uh, if, I just had a thought actually, if you're doing CNC machining, that might actually, that might be a good thing, but for straight parametric modeling and going to 3D printing, I don't like it there. All right, well, enough of me rambling. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.